Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 308, our course on Revelation and Daniel. Uh, we are currently going through the book of Revelation, uh, chapter and verse, and trying to get an understanding of what's been given to us there. Let's pray and we will get started. Could somebody please lead us in prayer? And then we will start. You can hear me, Pastor? Yeah. Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the class we are about to have. Lord, I pray that uh, even as pastors, as teachers, uh, the truth in the Bible will help us to understand it and to be fully convinced uh, in our faith. And God, uh, may everything that we learn uh, equip us, build us for your kingdom, Jesus. Uh, be with us throughout the session. Help us to have a good Wi-Fi connection. We just give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's um, go to chapter 8 of Revelation. Just a quick overview of that. That's kind of where we uh, were. We finished up chapter 8. And uh, we are ready to move actually now into chapter 9. So Revelation chapter 8. We are still in the first half on the first three and a half years on that side of the tribulation okay and all that we're reading now is in the early part the first three and a half years of the tribulation how do we know that because when we come to chapter 11 and 12 uh, we have the timing given for us uh, we will find in chapter 11 verse 1 also in chapter 12 uh, the, the clear indication that that is the second half of the tribulation. So therefore, we are saying everything before Revelation chapter 11 verse 1 is the first half, the first three and a half years of the tribulation. So we saw the seven seals that were opened. Then we saw how uh, God has marked 144,000 Jews to serve him. Chapter 8, we come to the seven trumpets. And uh, we see before the trumpet judgments can start, chapter 8 beginning, um, there is uh, the angel of God throws a censer from heaven. And that is representing so we see in uh, the, the incense is a prayers of the saints and that is being thrown to the earth so what we are saying is that around that time there's going to be a great if you want to use the word prayer revival happening on the earth there's going to be lots and lots of people praying calling out to god around that time so the angel is throwing this censer to the earth right and then we see the uh, seven trumpet judgments starting. So just to quickly summarize, uh, now each of these trumpet judgments is causing destruction on the earth uh, in some way. So there's vegetation, a third of uh, vegetation is being affected. That's Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. Then the seas are affected, the waters are affected, and at the end of chapter 8, there is uh, things are happening in the, the, the atmosphere, in the cosmic world, and moon and sun, and all of that's happening here. So let's go to chapter 9. We're going to pick up from here. This is the fifth uh, trumpet being sounded. And uh, there's, there's going to be continuous things happening on the earth. So Revelation 9. Verses 1 to 12, please. Somebody could read that for us. Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 to 12, please.
Revelation chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke lo locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power, their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. Mm. Thank you. So this fifth trumpet, if we were to summarize it, when this fifth trumpet sounds, it's it's there is a release of intense demonic work on the earth, and we can see why it, it's some of it is quite obvious. There's a release of intense demonic work on the earth, tormenting people tormenting those who do not have the mark of God on their foreheads. So these 144,000 Jews will not be affected. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm just kind of extending that where it says the seal of God on their foreheads could also include the others who believe in the Lord Jesus. Uh, they are divinely protected, but these demonic powers are tormenting humanity, people on the earth. Uh, and uh, to the point where they want to die. So, when you look at the details, there are, there are a lot of pictures. First, in verse 1, we see a star. But this is a star that's fallen from heaven to the earth. Right Now, star is used uh, in the Bible to represent angelic beings it is also used to represent righteous people you know in daniel 12 those who turn many to righteousness will shine like the stars but stars are also used to refer to angelic beings and fallen stars are specifically about fallen angels how do we know we will see in revelation 12 that when Satan was cast out of heaven, this dragon, he drew a third of the stars with him. Fallen angels, third of the stars. So here, there again, stars is used to represent fallen angels. So here it's clearly indicating Revelation 9, 1, a star fallen from heaven. And also we can understand the nature of the star by what it's doing. What is it causing? It's causing the bottomless pit to open, basically hell, 
and, and causing a release of demonic beings on the earth. So that's why we say this is a this particular star that's fallen to the earth is like an in, there's a, a invasion of uh, 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 this demonic being on the earth and uh, causing the bottomless pit to open and uh, the picture of locusts. So locusts in the natural are, are destructive. They destroy vegetation and all of that. But these locusts are different. These locusts don't destroy vegetation, but they go and affect people. And also the description of the locusts is very strange. So it's not locusts as we would think, like these big grasshoppers kind of creatures, but these are demonic beings released from the bottomless pit. pit. Very strange looking creatures in the spiritual realm. Very strange looking. And they are tormenting people for five months, those who don't have the seal of God on their head. Uh, and I can, and you know, it's, they, they, they're striking them. Uh, and uh, uh, there's some form of torment. And it says that the leader of these demonic beings is uh, the angel of the bottomless pit, who is the angel of death and destruction, Abaddon. Apollyon. So this angel is leading this whole army of demonic beings on the earth for five months, causing uh, torment to people to the point where they want to die. They just want to end their life on earth. Right? How they are tormenting, we don't know, but we can just imagine maybe it's mental torment or physical torment, something that they're doing uh, that's causing people to want to die. So Fifth trumpet is a release of intense demonic activity on the earth for five months to the point where people will, or are wanting to die. Then the sixth trumpet, Revelation chapter 9. Feel free to ask questions, all right? We're just going through reading the scriptures and I'm just explaining. Uh, feel free to ask any questions. Revelation 9, let's read verses 13 to 20, please. Revelation 9, 13 to 20, please. Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 to 20. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes having heads with which they inflict injury. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and the idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. Mm. Thank you. So this is the sixth trumpet. So the angel is uh, uh, you know directed by God to sound this sixth trumpet and uh, there are four angels who are released from the great river Euphrates who've been kept there in that part of the world they've been they've been assigned there to for this particular moment and what do they do? 
they mobilized this army of 200 million. And this army of 200 million um, uh, it's characterized here by red, blue, and yellow. Red, blue, and yellow, and they are very destructive. They are going around destroying people uh, in in uh, you know uh, uh, one third of of the people are killed uh, through the fire, smoke, and brimstone which came out of their mouths. So. And so, think about this. Think about this. When when John is describing what he is seeing, he's seeing you know uh, red, fiery red, smoke and blue and sulfur. Now he's seeing things coming out of their mouths and things coming out of their tails uh, and all of that. Uh, what could this be? Right, and remember, like, and we said some of this uh, earlier. God is showing John things that are going to happen at least two thousand years out in the future. John has never. I'm just. Say, I'm just using examples. John, the apostle, has never seen a drone. He's never seen. A ballistic missile that's flying, that's very destructive, which when it impounds, you know, gives rise to this big smoke and you know, thing. And uh, he's never seen those kinds. Uh, he has no context, right? So he's seeing these things, and then he's writing it down in language that he has. So what exactly are these things uh, that John is saying? We don't know, but. What we can say is there is an uh, army of 200 million people or, or 200 million who are going to kill one third of human population. And this army is mobilized by these demonic powers that have been confined to that particular part of the world around the river Euph Euphrates. They're released from there these four angels and they are going out to mobilize this army to go out and carry out their destruction they're going to instigate this army of 200 million people of strange looking I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm saying people but it's an army of 200 million uh, uh, it says horsemen meaning people mounted on horses um, that are going out to destroy very destructive Right, so we don't know the details, so we can only speculate. Like we could guess, try and guess. Oh yeah, so this is probably a modern day army that is equipped with these modern day destructive weapons that cause this kind of you know sulfur and smoke and red and blue and all kinds of destruction happening. Uh, this army is instigated by demonic agency that are operating in and around the Euphrates, which Euphrates means we are looking at Iran, uh, Iraq, that part of the world. From there, they are being provoked. It doesn't say the army is coming from there, but they are being provoked by those beings that were operating or that have been assigned there, uh, that are confined there. Those beings are provoking this army of... Uh, 200 million who are then destroying a third of the human population through these, you know, things they have. So that is happening in the sixth trumpet, right? Now, what would, you know, what would I, what would I, you know, if, if I were to try to translate that to, okay, what would it look like in today's world? It seems like some major army of 200 million maybe russia maybe china they have the capacity to have a mobilized that many people or it could be a combination of people they have been instigated by what's happening in around the middle east 
around the river Euphrates, demonic powers. And so they go about on this rampage of destroying a third of human population with the kinds of weapons they have, which to John looks very strange. Uh, he talks about fire and smoke and brimstone, which came out of their mouths. The tails are like serpents and having heads. So, you know, you can imagine, you know, if something was designed that way. It looks like that to John, but it could be different kinds of weapons that we're being released causing this. All right. So we don't know for sure. We can only speculate. But the indication is there is a demonic agency, there is human agency, and one third of human population is destroyed. We are seeing a little bit of that these days. You know, when Russia is attacking Ukraine or has been attacking, uh, and the war has been going on, you know, how many lives have been lost? The destruction, the kinds of weapons being used. But it, the scale of what is described here in Revelation 9 is much bigger because it's saying one third of the human population is destroyed. Much bigger. Revelation chapter 9 ends with this very strange note, verses 20 to 21. It says, But the rest of mankind who are not affected. So there are there are going to be regions and parts of the world that may not necessarily be affected or directly affected by what's happening. John is noticing that they are not repenting. They're not turning to God. Instead, they're continuing on and doing, you know, whatever, worship of idols and uh, demons and everything is going on. Meaning they're not, the heart, their hearts are their hearts are hardened. They're not turning to God, even though they're seeing all these things happen, and they obviously have the opportunity to look at the scriptures and say, "Hey, these things were spoken of in the Bible." You know, they have all of that, but they're not turning to God. Right? So this is Revelation. Uh, sorry, the sixth trumpet. There's one more trumpet to sound. Now, we come to chapter 10, and chapter 10 is what we refer to as a parenthetical chapter. All right, feel free to ask questions. I'm just moving ahead, but feel free to ask questions. Chapter 10 is a parenthetical chapter, meaning it's not part of what is going to happen during the tribulation, but while John is telling us is being given the revelation of things that are going to happen he has his own personal experience so that's parenthetical that means it's not part of what's going to happen the sequence of events but john there's this big angel who's the angel of god who's so big so powerful he comes and tells john to eat a little book so john eat this book John eats it. Initially, it is sweet, but then when it goes into his stomach, it's very bitter. And then the angel says, John, you have to prophesy some more to the nations, to peoples. You have to. You have a lot more prophecy to give. Uh, and it is bitter because this prophecy is all about judgment. It's about destruction that's going to happen and so on. So that's chapter 10. Let's just read it. It's a little, you know, a note of what John is experiencing while God is giving him the revelation of the end times. So, Revelation chapter 10. Somebody could read verses 1 to 7. Or can read the whole chapter, please. Yeah. Revelation 10, verses 1 to 11. The whole chapter, please. Revelation chapter 10, verses 1. The mighty angel with the little book. I saw little, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. 
he had a little book open in his hand and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars when he cried out seven thunders uttered their voices now when the seven thunders uttered their voices i was about to write but i heard a voice from heaven saying to me seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them the angel whom i saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his ha hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are in it the earth and the things that are in it and the sea and the things that are in it that there should be delay no longer but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel when he is about to sound the mystery of god will be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets then the voice which i heard from heaven spoke to me again and said go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth so i went to the angel and said to him give me the little book and he said to me take and eat it and it will make your stomach bitter but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth then i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth but when i had eaten it my stomach became bitter and he said to me you must prophesy again about many peoples nations tongues and kings amen amen so john sees this big mighty angel now this angel is unlike anything we normally imagine because when we think of angels sometimes we think of them as little kids children playing in sunday school with wings little angels or sometimes we think angels are human sized or like you know human sized but this angel this mighty angel and i don't know why and i don't know how but he is or he or the saying i don't think the angels have gender but i'm just saying the angel is so big one on one feet on the ocean one feet on the earth and reaching up into the heavens an angelic being so whether god is just showing john you know that the angel is so big or so powerful over the literal I, i don't know whether that's a literal thing but or whether he's just having a visual of an angel that's so mighty so powerful uh that um the angel uh the angel's influence covers water and land and up to on the sky maybe that's what god is trying to get to john the angels are so powerful so that's something in our minds right i don't think the angels of god are like little creatures you know flying around nice no no they are very very powerful and uh they are they are authorized by god to do what god's called them to uh, assign them to do now this angel has one announcement this angel says in the days of the seventh trumpet so one more trump one more trumpet is left right we've read through till six trumpets this angel is saying when in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel uh, you know that means the seventh angel is really giving a signal that we are coming close to the end and so what we will see is the seventh angel is sounding the trumpet after we cross the middle line that is after we cross the three and a half years and this mighty angel is telling john john in the days of the sounding of the seven means basically the seventh angel is saying okay you've just got three and a half years left right it's just days left literally you've got days left and prophecies will be fulfilled 
And also we notice that when this mighty angel came, John actually heard certain things which he was told, don't write, keep it secret, seal it. So we don't know what those utterances were, uh, verse 4, which John heard, he was instructed, don't write it. And for whatever reason, God doesn't want us to know that. But then after this, the John is given a little book, you eat it, and okay, John, you've got a lot more to prophesy to peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. So God is going to show you some more. So when we start chapter 11, we are crossing over the middle of the seven years. We are coming into the second half. And it is in the second half that the seventh trumpet sounds, saying, you got days left. Literally, you got days left. And God is going to wrap everything up, and the kingdoms of this world will be taken over by Almighty God. Right? So, chapter 11. Let's read, please, verses 1 to... I will follow the... Uh, okay. uh, 1 to 14. Chapter 11, verses 1 to 14 where we're going to read about the two witnesses. Then I was given a reed like a measuring load, and the angel stood saying, Raise and measure this temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is, which is outside the, the temple, and do not measure it. For it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will train the holy city, underfoot for 42 months and i will give you i will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy 1260 days clothed in sunk clothes these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the lord of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them fire proceeds from their mouth and devolves their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over water to turn them to blood, to strike and to strike the earth with all pledges as often as they desire. Now, when they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry, and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here and they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them in the same hour there was a great earthquake and the tennis of the city fell in the earthquake seven thousand men were killed and the rest were afraid and gave glory to go to the god of heaven the second hill is past behold the third hill is coming quickly amen Amen. Amen. So, 
what are the details we can get from this passage? So, John is seeing an angel being asked, uh, I'm looking at verse 1, to measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there, Revelation 11, 1. So at this point, which is in the middle of the tribulation, why do we say middle of tribulation? Because he says the 42 months, 42 months or 1,260 days. 42 months, 1,260 days is three and a half years. So very clear, Revelation 11 is there in the middle of the seven years. First three and a half years is over. Second three and a half years is starting. How does it start? It starts by telling us that worship is happening in the temple of God. Right? He's saying, measure the temple, the altar, and the, uh, where, where the people are worshipping. Verse 1. So there has to be a temple. So this is one reason why we say that there has to be a literal, physical temple. Right? He's not referring to a spiritual thing, because then you're not. there's no need to go and measure it. There is a literal physical temple with the altar where people are actually worshipping. But something changes. What is happening? The, the outer court has been, is now being trampled by the Gentiles. So it's telling us that something is changing here. All right? This place of worship is going to be desecrated. And we will see this happen in chapter 13. Very clear. When the Antichrist sets himself up as God in the temple of God. Right? But here it's giving us an indication that the Gentiles are going to come in and desecrate the temple. And it's giving us a timing also. 42 months, 1,260 days, three and a half years left. At this time, that means in the middle of the seven years, God is going to put two prophets on the earth. Now, here, he doesn't give us the name, right? So what we do know in, uh, in uh, Malachi chapter 4, uh, verse 4, Malachi 4, 4, 4, 5 and 6, sorry. Malachi 4, 5 and 6 says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the heart of the fathers, the children, the heart of the children to their fathers, lest they come and strike the earth with a curse. So Malachi 4, 5 and 6 has already stated, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Now, what do we know about Elijah the prophet? Elijah was taken up into heaven in a chariot. He didn't die physically. And we know the scriptures are saying it is appointed unto man once to die. So death awaits. So with that in mind, we say, well, who could the other prophet be? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we know that Enoch was the other person who was taken up to into heaven without dying. So it's very highly likely that the second prophet, along with Elijah, is Enoch. Uh, again, we, 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 we can only, you know, uh, cross-reference. And based on that, we could say, but we don't know for sure. We, we, we think it could be Enoch. Uh, I, 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 there are people who say, oh, maybe it's Moses or, uh, uh, you know, somebody else that they may want to put there. But if you ask me personally, I, I would think it's Elijah and Enoch because, you know, these two people didn't die and uh, physically and they were caught up into heaven. So God is sending them back here for the special assignment. So the other thing I want to point out here in verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. So olive trees 
lamp stand. So you, you, you pick up that image. Olive trees representing anointed ones. So olive trees, significant in the Bible. What do olive trees represent? They represent anointed people. In this case, these two anointed prophets. And in the book of Zechariah, uh, also you see uh, these two, two uh, olive trees through from which the anointing flows um, are represented there. So olive trees uh, are used symbolically or figuratively in the Bible uh, in one sense to represent uh, people who are anointed by God. And as well as lamp stands. Lamp stands also carry the holy anointing oil and they give light. So just to keep this in mind, olive trees, lamp stands being used to figuratively to represent anointed people and uh, the prophets of God. And these prophets for three and a half years, they are prophesying, they are ministering, they are doing very powerful signs and wonders. Uh, almost similar to what we see Moses do during uh, the time when he was going to bring people out of Egypt. You know, similar kinds of signs that affect the natural elements, uh, uh, weather, power, water to turn blood and plagues and so on. So they're administering for three and a half years. Now, chapter 11 is unique in that sense, meaning only in this chapter, only in these verses that we read in this passage, we read about the two witnesses and the three and a half years of ministry is described for us. So we are actually starting in the middle of the tribulation, going till the end of the tribulation and saying for the next three and a half years, these two prophets are going to be prophesying. They're going to be doing all these signs and wonders. So it's giving us that journey uh, and insight into the future. And then towards the end of that three and a half years of ministry, Satan working through the Antichrist, his agent on earth, is going to kill these two people. He's going to kill them. And verse 8 says, Revelation 11, 8, that their dead bodies will lie in the great city. Spiritually, at that time, it's called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So it's referring to the city of Jerusalem. Why? That's where Jesus was crucified. But at that time, during this time, in the, in the middle of the tribulation, the city of Jerusalem has become like Sodom, given to immorality, uh, specifically homosexual relationships, Sodom, sodomy, is connected to that, and become like Egypt. Egypt is idolatry, worship of false gods. So, what has happened to the city of Jerusalem? At that time, there is immorality and idolatry so prevalent in that city. That's where these prophets are ministering. Right? And in that city, they are killed. And it says their bodies will be left to lie on the streets in the city of Jerusalem. Verse 9 says, people from around the world will see their bodies for three and a half days. Now, what is interesting is we are in a time when this can happen literally. Right? Lit today, literally, you can see anywhere in the world through live streaming, live television, whatever, which was not possible, you know, maybe let's say, at least 20 or 30 years ago. It would not be possible. You'd only have to wait for the next day's newspaper and you'll see a picture. Uh, you, you, you won't see, you know, live streaming. Or you might see the news, you know, a day, sometime later, uh, they'll show a recording of it. But it says here, verse 9, people will see their dead bodies and they won't bury them. So we are living in a day and time when this can literally happen. 
right? Revelation 11, 9 can literally be fulfilled. So they're going to see these two prophets. They're going to see their dead bodies. People are going to, all those who, you know, didn't like them, they're going to be happy. But then God is going to show them another big sign. While people are watching, you can imagine all the cameras, all the press is all around on that street. Nobody's touching their bodies. So these people deserve it. And all the cameras are zooming in on these two people. And, you know, people are watching live stream everywhere and live news. And, 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 and then before their eyes, as the cameras and people are all watching, God raises these two people up and they are taken to heaven. In other words, God is giving sign after sign to the people of the earth at that time. Hey, I am doing, I am working, I am here, I am alive, repent, turn. And um, there is a great earthquake at that moment. And about 7,000 people in that city of Jerusalem are killed, destroyed, city fall, there, there's a destruction and uh, uh, 7,000 people are killed. And it says that some people were afraid and some gave glory to the God of heaven. So this is coming, to, this was happening at the end of the three and a half years, right? Because these two prophets are ministering for three and a half years. At the end of the three and a half years, they are killed. And for three and a half days, this happens. And there is this great destruction in the city of Jerusalem. Okay. Now, we are coming back to the middle of the tribulation. Because the seventh angel is sounding. And we read in chapter 10, chapter 10, when the mighty angel said, when the seventh angel sounds, in the days of that angel, the sounding, everything is going to be fulfilled. Prophecies will be fulfilled. Basically, in a very short time, in the days, so a handful of days, it will be fulfilled. So, the, so John has seen this. Two witnesses, three and a half years, this is what they do. Back to the middle. Continuing from here, what's the next thing? Okay, next thing he say, sees is the seventh angel sounding. Okay, so let's pause here. I see the time here, so it's time for a break. Let's go for a break. We'll come back and we'll pick up here in verse 15 of chapter 11. Let's uh, meet again at 11 a.m. in about 10 minutes, and then we will continue. Okay, thank you.